Welcome to Electrical Diagnostic Tools, the second video in a three-part diagnostic tool and equipment series for Yamaha's five-star service training program. I'm Jill Kammer, Corporate Training Manager for Yamaha. In our previous video, Mechanical Diagnostic Tools, we discussed the importance of fixing the customer's Yamaha right the first time. Technicians and customers have high expectations when a customer brings their Yamaha in for service. Both want the product fixed right the first time. And in order to do that, the technician must properly diagnose the problem and then fix it correctly. As every technician knows, electrical problems can sometimes be difficult to diagnose. Electrical systems consist of many components. Sometimes these components are interconnected, so in diagnosis, component isolation may become necessary. At that point, having the proper electrical diagnostic tools and understanding their use can make the difference between a simple repair and quite possibly an expensive hair pulling nightmare. With this video, we hope to provide you with the information you need to understand and use the tools available to test electrical systems. Completion of this video training course also puts you one step closer to your five-star certification. We hope you enjoy this program. Professional technicians rely on diagnostic tools to confirm their judgments and to pinpoint the exact location of engine problems. The first tape of this series covered pressure testing and precision measuring tools. This video will focus on the tools used to test electrical systems. They include analog and digital multimeters, dynamic spark tester, Yamaha CDI tester, repair peak reading adapter, ignition coil tester, high current shunt, electronic battery tester, and hydrometer. Troubleshooting electrical problems is simple once you're familiar with the uses of test equipment. The Yamaha analog multimeter and the digital multimeter are two of the basic tools needed for electrical diagnosis. Let's look at both multimeters individually. The Yamaha analog multimeter is a versatile test instrument. As you can see from the meter's face and selector switch, the tester is really three meters in one, a voltmeter, ammeter, and ohmmeter. Each of these meters has a different purpose, and the method of connection is different for each type. You must understand the different hookups needed not only to use the tester, but to prevent damage. The voltmeter measures voltage in the system being checked. It measures the voltage in units called volts. The voltmeter is connected in parallel with a positive lead attached to the component or the wire to be checked and the negative lead attached to a good ground. When connecting a voltmeter to a circuit, the wires or components of the circuit should not be disconnected from the power source. The voltmeter is frequently used to check the charging system of most vehicles. As an example, let's check the charge rate of this Grizzly 600. First, we need to zero the multimeter with a selector in the off position. Next, make sure the battery is fully charged. It should have at least 12.8 volts before any testing can be done. Insert the black test lead into the negative post. Insert the red test lead into the positive post. Turn the rotary switch to the DC 20 volt function. Connect the voltmeter in parallel. Touch the probes to the corresponding positive and negative terminals on the battery. Okay, the battery looks good. 
we can now check the charging system. The charge rate for the Grizzly is 14 volts at 3000 RPM. Start the engine and accelerate to about 3000 RPM. According to our voltmeter, it appears that the charging system of our Grizzly is working correctly. Now let's move on to the ammeter. The ammeter is used to measure the amount of current flow in a circuit. It measures the amount of current flow in units called amps. An ammeter is always used in a series connection. Both wires of the meter are connected to the circuit and the meter is a bridge between the circuit wires. This means that the current flowing through a wire to a component must also pass through the ammeter. Make sure to observe polarity. If the ammeter is connected in any other manner, it will be damaged. The ammeter must always be capable of measuring more amps than the measured circuit carries, never to exceed the maximum current rating of 10 amps. Later in the video, we will discuss how to check high current systems with the use of a high current shunt. Right now, let's set up the ammeter for a 10 amp DC test across the main fuse. Insert the black test lead into the negative post. Insert the red test lead into the 10 amp DC post. Turn the rotary switch to the 10 amp DC function. Remove the main fuse and touch the probes to the fuse clips accordingly. Remember to check polarity. Turn the key on and check the current draw. At this point, it should be negative. If not, reverse the leads. Start the engine and check for a positive current flow. Now turn on the headlights. You should see an increase in the amperage draw. This ammeter shows a regulated current flow of 2 amps. The third meter test is the ohmmeter function which measures the resistance or opposition to current flow in a circuit. The ohmmeter measures resistance in units called ohms. It offers a wide variety of settings or multipliers, all which are read in a single scale. If you forget which multiplier setting you're on, you can easily misread the meter. Unlike the other two meters, the ohmmeter uses its own power source. Therefore, the circuit's power source must be disconnected before the ohmmeter can be used. The ohmmeter is connected in place of the original power supply. The power source for the ohmmeter may be a 1.5 VDC AA size or 9 volt DC internal battery. Every time the ohmmeter is used, the battery loses some of its charge. So remember, the state of charge of the internal battery affects the accuracy of the meter. Consequently, the meter must be readjusted after each use. Ohmmeters should never be connected to any circuit that has power applied to it. You can avoid this by unplugging the component prior to checking it or by removing the main fuse when checking wires in a circuit. Insert the black test lead into the negative post. Insert the red test lead into the positive post. Turn the rotary switch to the R times 1 function. Calibrate the ohmmeter prior to testing. This is done by touching the test leads together and turning the calibration knob until the meter reads zero. This step must also be performed when switching to different ohm scales. If the meter will not zero, try replacing the battery. Now that we've zeroed the meter, let's check the ohm's resistance of the Grizzly stator coils. Specification for the Grizzly stator coil is 0.70 to 0.86 ohms. In this case, the R times 1 scale will work since the reading should be in the 1 scale. After checking all three legs, it appears that the coils are in good shape. Next, for practice, let's check the spark plug cap resistance. Specifications call for 10K ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. The reading will be in the K or 1000 scale, so let's rotate the switch to the R times 1000. Next, let's zero the meter prior to testing since we've changed the ohm scale. Touch the probes to the test points accordingly. This spark plug cap is well within specifications. Now let's look at the similarities and differences between the analog and digital multimeter. 
The digital multimeter performs the same functions as the analog meter, but it has a few added features. Let's look at the main differences. The digital meter is capable of reading in millivolts. This is a great feature when using the high current shunt, a tool which will be covered later in the video. In the 300 millivolts DC function, the readings displayed are in millivolts. To use the millivolts function for greater resolutions on tests below 300 MV. Just like the analog meter, you need to zero the digital meter, but the procedure is a little different. The digital meter does not have a zero adjuster. You simply subtract the number that appeared when the two test leads were touched together from the total reading. Unlike the analog meter, the digital meter will auto find the correct ohm scale and display it accordingly. There are two letters that may appear next to the ohm sign. If the letter K appears, then the number that precedes it indicates thousands of ohms. So 1.2K is 1.2 thousand ohms or 1200 ohms. If the letter M precedes the ohm sign, this indicates mega ohms or millions of ohms. If the letter OL appears on the ohm scale, it indicates an open circuit. The digital meter also includes a diode test selection. Use this selection only on unloaded circuits to determine diode condition. Diodes are one-way valves and should only allow current to flow in one direction. The most common place that diodes are found are in the rectifier regulator assembly of the charging system. Let's test one of the diodes in this Grizzly's rectifier assembly. Place the meter leads in the normal diode or voltage position. Turn the rotary switch to the diode function. Attach the black meter lead to the DC output lead of the rectifier. Attach the red meter lead to an AC lead. The forward bias reading should show a 0.3 to 0.8 DC voltage drop. To test the rectifier reverse bias on the output side, reverse the meter hookups. Attach the red lead to the DC output lead of the rectifier. Attach the black meter lead to an AC lead. The reverse bias reading should display the symbol OL or an open circuit. As you can see, the multimeter plays a major role in electrical diagnosis. If the multimeter you purchased is not one of the two we just discussed, don't worry. Most multimeters perform the same basic functions. Refer to your multimeter's user's manual for correct meter lead hookups and test procedures. We have also included in your workbook a list of symbols used in wiring diagrams to better aid you in diagnosing electrical problems. Now let's look at some tools that we can use to diagnose CDI ignition systems. If you suspect the ignition system failed or it has an intermittent condition, we can use the following tools to diagnose the problem area. Dynamic spark tester, the Y1 CDI tester, ray pair peak reading adapter, and ignition coil tester. The first thing we need to do is check the condition of the spark plugs and spark plug caps. These spark plugs look good. Next, let's check the spark plug cap resistance using the digital multimeter. The cap reads 4.40 K ohms. That is well within specifications for this model. Reinstall the spark plug and spark plug cap and check for spark. The easiest way to do this is to use the Yamaha Dynamic Tester. Connect the dynamic spark tester in series between the spark plug and the spark plug cap. To start, set the gap to 2 millimeters. Next, start the engine and let it idle. Inspect the ignition spark gap. Now slowly open the gap until a misfire occurs. The minimum gap should be no less than 6 millimeters. Refer to your service manual for specifications. This rater passed the test with no problem. In fact, it jumped a 7 millimeter spark gap. The next diagnostic tool is used to test CDI ignition systems, including the CDI box. 
This tool is called the Yamaha CDI tester or Y1 tester. For the purpose of this video, we will use a 1100 water vehicle jet boat engine simulator to perform our demo of the Y1 tester. The ignition energy output is referenced against a 0 to 100 scale on the tester. The higher the energy output, the higher the value shown on the scale. Indication is provided by a lamp that lights when the scale knob is set at a position corresponding to the energy output. The ignition system output pulses rise and fall so rapidly that a regular voltmeter cannot respond fast enough to provide an accurate reading. The Y1 tester has a special built-in memory circuit that can remember the level of a peak pulse long enough for the meter to provide an accurate readout. The tester has two input ranges, selectable by a toggle switch. The low range is sensitive to AC or DC voltages from 0.5 to 27 volts. The high range is sensitive to AC and DC of approximately 75 to 500 volts. The correct dial settings and input ranges for each test may vary from model to model. Check the spec data sheet for specifications if available. If the information is not available, use an identical machine that is in good operating condition to gain the minimum dial settings. Before any test can be done, we must first test the meter. A test simulator comes with each tester to check the lamp, the detector circuit, and the batteries. To test the high scale, move the range switch to the high position. Plug the simulator into a 110 volt AC electrical outlet for 10 seconds. Remove the simulator from the outlet and connect the P and N leads from the tester to the simulator. Set the tester dial to 50 or lower. Press the button on the simulator. The indicator lamp on the tester should light. Press the reset button to prepare for the next test. To test the low scale, move the range switch to the low position. Connect the yellow lead to the negative terminal of a 12 volt battery. Connect the red lead to the positive terminal of the battery. The indicator lamp should light. Output tests actually measure the output of the component being tested. This measurement can be done in two ways. The first way is to measure output with the component connected. This is the fully loaded method. The advantage of this is that the component is loaded by the system in the normal manner. The load on the component determines how hard the component has to work to generate voltage. If the component passes this test, it is good. If the component fails the fully loaded test, disconnect the component and connect it directly to the Y1 tester. This is the partially loaded test. If the component fails the partially loaded test, it is bad. If the component fails the fully loaded test, but passes the partially loaded test, it may have a short to ground. Use a short to ground test on the component. When using a Y1 tester, there are a few points to keep in mind. As mentioned earlier, the tester has two scales, high and low. Both are referenced on a 0 to 100 scale. These numbers are reference numbers only and are not actual voltage readings. We will cover actual voltage readings with a rate pair peak reading voltmeter later in the video. The logical place to start testing for output is the magneto. There are two reasons for this. First, the magneto is the originator of both the current and timing pulses. Second, the magneto is the only area of the system that has moving parts. If the vehicle you're testing uses an electric starter, make sure the battery is fully charged. If the battery is low, the cranking speed will be affected and so will the output results. The same rule applies to a kickstart system. Be sure to kick the engine over fully when testing. Also be sure to disconnect any ignition controlling components before testing. For example, the main switch, stop switch, the side stand switch. In most cases, disconnecting the black and white wire for the CDI unit will eliminate most ignition controlling components. Refer to the appropriate service manual for specifications. Once you've located the appropriate color codes in your technical service data, start with the charge, source coil, or coils. If you're not sure which wire color codes to use, 
use the same ones for the resistance test. If the proper test connections are from a colored wire to another colored wire, you will have to test one way and reverse the leads using the highest reading. When testing, start at 100 and work your way down until you get a consistent reading. A reading is indicated when the tester light is illuminated. You should get the same reading twice in a row. Remember to reset the meter after every test. A good rule is that all of the high and low scale output should read at least 70 at cranking speed. There are some exceptions to this rule, like this model, but it will give you a starting point when you have no specifications at all to work with. To test the pulse or coil or coils, follow the same procedure as the source coil. In this case, if the proper test connections are from a colored wire to a black wire or ground, like on these pulse or coil, attach the positive tester lead to the colored wire and the negative tester lead to the black wire. If all the magneto outputs are functioning properly, you must check the output of the CDI unit. For the CDI test, connect the test leads in parallel to the ignition coil wire in the CDI box. Attach the tester negative lead to the ignition coil wire and the positive lead to ground. Crank the engine over enough to get the same reading twice in a row. The reading should be within 90% of the charge coil output. The CDI load coil is used with the ignition tester to simulate an actual operating condition. The load coil can cause a marginal CDI control unit to break down under test but will not affect a good unit. Some CDI control units will not operate properly without a load of some kind attached. If no reading is obtained on the CDI output check, Try the test using the load coil. The load coil can be especially useful when you're testing CDI output to a suspected bad ignition coil. The load coil can be substituted for the ignition coil primary. This provides a method to fully load the CDI box with a known good coil attached. Never crank the engine over unless the CDI unit is connected to either the ignition coil or a test instrument. Internal damage to the CDI unit may result. The rate pair adapter and fluke digital voltmeter can be used as an alternative test instrument to the Y1 tester. The rate pair 97-73A was originally designed to be used with a Model 73 fluke meter. This adapter will, however, work with most digital voltmeters that have a 3 quarter inch or a 19.05 millimeter center between the positive and negative sockets. The rate pair adapter connects and functions similarly to the Y1 tester. This adapter converts and stabilizes output from the CDI box, the pulsar coils, or the charge coils. Unlike the Y1, this meter adapter is not polarity sensitive. This makes the tester very simple to use. To connect the adapter, first remove the standard test leads. Locate the ribbed end of the adapter marked with a plus. Align the plus plug with a meter socket and the other plug with a com socket and insert it. Now set the DVOM meter to DC volts. The rate pair test leads are not polarity sensitive, so there's less danger of incorrect connections. The fluke meter is auto ranging, so no additional steps are required. All the readings will be in peak voltage. This meter adapter can be used on many different ignition systems. The most reliable way to establish a set of specifications is to test a good running unit. Remember, troubleshooting with a rate pair adapter requires the same methodical approach used with the Y1. Here are some general specs for ignition systems peak voltages. Charge coil, 150 volts plus or minus 10%. Pulsar coil, 4 to 8 volts. CDI output within 90% of the charge coil. The ignition coil receives the output voltage from the CDI unit. The output voltage increases to an amount capable of jumping the gap between the spark plug electrode. To test the ignition coil outside of the ignition circuit, we must use the Yamaha ignition coil tester. This test is a dynamic test and you can visually inspect the spark and its strength. Before testing can begin, disconnect the coil from the wiring harness 
and conduct a static test on the spark plug caps. Remove the spark plug caps from the coil leads and test the resistance of the caps. Compare the readings to specifications found in the service data. Replace the caps if they're out of specifications. Single cylinder and some triple cylinder engines use a single lead ignition coil. Twin cylinder engines use a dual lead ignition coil. The function and operation of this coil is similar to the single lead ignition coil. However, it requires a different connection to the coil tester. For dual lead coils or Siamese coils, connect the red or positive primary tester lead to the coil's primary lead. Connect the black or negative primary tester lead to the coil's mounting bracket or ground. Connect the red secondary tester lead and the black secondary tester lead to the coil's secondary spark plug leads. For single lead coils, connect the red secondary tester lead to the spark plug lead and connect the black secondary lead to the coil's mounting bracket or ground. To start, adjust the spark plug gap to 2 mm by rotating the adjusting knob. Do not open the gap more than 6 to 7 mm or damage to the coil may result. Connect the tester to a 110 volt AC power source or outlet and turn the power switch to 6 volts or 12 volts depending on what the unit's ignition circuit is rated at. If the vehicle is equipped with a 12 volt battery, use a 12 volt power supply. For a 6-volt system, use the 6-volt power supply. A coil in good condition should be capable of jumping the 6 to 7 millimeter gap. Let the tester run for 3 to 5 minutes to allow the coil to reach operating temperature. If the coil spark becomes intermittent after a warm-up period, the coil is defective and should be replaced. High current shun is a calibrated resistance wire that is connected in series with a battery or an electrical circuit to be tested and is plugged into a digital multimeter. The multimeter will then provide a direct readout of current draw from 0 to 99 amps and 100 to 199 amps in 0.1 amp increments. Most multimeters can only read a maximum of 10 amps, therefore a high current shunt becomes a handy tool. The high current shunt allows for high amperage readings without damaging the multimeter. To use a high current shunt, connect a calibrated wire in series. For example, connect the shunt in series with a battery to check the charging system on this Royal Star. First, disconnect the negative battery cable and connect one end of the shunt to the negative battery terminal and the second shunt lead to the battery negative cable. This adapter will work with most digital voltmeters that have a 3 quarter inch or 19.05 millimeter center between the positive and negative sockets. To connect the adapter, first remove the regular test leads. Locate the ribbed end of the adapter marked ground. Align the ground plug with the meter socket COM and the other plug with the POS socket and insert. Now set the DVOM meter to 300 MVDC. The shunt test leads are polarity sensitive. The fluke meter is auto ranging so no additional steps are required. All the readings will be in amps. One way to make sure the adapters install correctly is to check the amperage draw with the key on and the engine off. The reading should be negative. If the reading is positive, reverse the adapter. Now you can start the engine and safely check the amperage without the worry of damaging your multimeter. You can also use the shunt to check high amp systems like the starter motor. For example, this starter motor is using 60 amps to turn the engine over. The Yamaha electronic battery tester is a quick and accurate tester. The tester works by reading resistance through the battery cells. This tester is also essential for testing maintenance-free batteries and it can also give you the condition of the battery before you charge it. Let's use it on this Royal Star maintenance-free battery. To use this tester, you don't have to remove the battery, and at the same time, we can check the charging system and starter motor. Attach the red clip to the positive terminal and the black clip to the negative terminal. Switch the selector to volts and check the state of charge. Next, adjust the battery rating knob to cold cranking amps. 
switch the selector to the correct temperature to test the battery condition and percentage of rated power. To test the charging system, switch the selection knob to volts. Start the engine and check the charging output on the tester charging range. Rev the engine up to make sure the voltage rises with RPM. The last test is the starter test. Set the selection switch to volts. Disconnect or ground the ignition coil so that the engine will turn over but not start. Crank the engine over with a starter button and check the tester cranking range. If the battery show good and the cold cranking test shows bad, check the starter motor for excessive amperage draw. The battery hydrometer is used to check the specific gravity of a lead acid or refillable type battery. This tester gives you an exact specific gravity reading for each cell. The specific gravity tells the degree of charge, generally a specific gravity of about 1.265 to 1.280 indicates a full charge. A reading of 1.230 to 1.265 indicates the battery should be charged before testing. To check the specific gravity, remove the battery and refill caps. Insert the syringe into each cell and draw enough fluid up to float the gauge. This battery shows 1.270 and does not need to be charged. That completes the electrical section of our diagnostic tool video series. We hope the information presented in this section of the video course has increased your knowledge and is useful to you during your diagnostic work. The next video in this series will focus on the diagnostic tools used to test fuel systems. These tools include carburetor synchronizer, EGA analyzer, fuel level gauge, EFI fuel pressure gauge, pop-off gauge, and alcohol tester.